Come down to the water Forget every care And you will find him waiting The Prince of Life is there He flows in the river Soars on the summer air His love is all around you The Prince of Life is there Open up your Good morning. My name is Mike Silberg, and I thank you for joining us. We're in Columbus, Ohio this morning, and uh, we'd like to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we pray for those right now who are hurting. We, we lost uh, a, a lo close loved one this week, and uh, we know there's a lot of hurting people out there family and friends, and, and we just lift them up right now. We ask your touch on them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the title of this talk this morning is God is a God of Equity. Uh, equity is one of those words you don't hear very often. Usually it's used with uh, insurance companies and marketing. you probably heard of Equity Life Insurance. You know, equity actually means justice fairness, and impartiality. I'm going to read you this verse from Psalm, Psalm 98, verse 9. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. God is a God of equity. Equity. So why is this important to know? Well, there's a lot of junk out there. There's a lot of bad theology. I was once in a uh, Christian fellowship years ago, and they actually taught that babies that died or babies that died in the womb were going to go to hell because they hadn't heard the gospel message. You know, that's, that's insane. You know, and I'm going to go through that today. That's kind of what I'm going through here is we want to show you that God does not hold us responsible for things we are not accountable for. He doesn't send babies or anyone else to hell without having a fair opportunity to know him. We were all born into a fallen creation, a fallen environment ruled by Satan, and we inherited Adam and Eve's fallen nature. This is what King David said. I was born in sin, or heredity, and shaped in iniquity, or shaped by the sat satanic environment we live in. God being a God of equity does not hold us responsible for the fallen world we were born into. He doesn't hold us responsible for heredity or environment. If you remember in psychology class in high school, we were told we are products of heredity or environment. And that, that's true to a certain extent, but there's also willful sin. Sin we commit outside heredity environment. But first we're gonna look at heredity. There's a verse in Ezekiel 18.20, and it says this, that children will not bear the punishment for their father's sin. God does not hold us responsible for sin which is inherited from our forefathers. However, we do experience the effects of their sin. Here's, you know, in uh, Commandment 5 of the Ten Commandments, it says this, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, causing the consequences of the sin of the parents to spread to their children, to the third and the fourth generations. This includes the sinful nature we inherited from Adam and Eve. Although from generation to generation we inherit the corrupting effects of Adam and Eve's sin, we are not held responsible 
for their sin. God does not hold us responsible for heredity. Environment. God also does not hold us responsible for the environment of sin we are born into, since it is ruled over by Satan. Here's a, a verse from 1 John 5:19. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they were not punished for the sin of the serpent or Satan. God punished the serpent for his own sin. I'm going to read you Genesis 3:14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, or to Satan, Because you have deceived Eve, cursed are you above all animals. God does not hold us responsible for Satan's sin or for the satanic environment which we are born into. He holds us responsible for only our own sin. Okay, now we're going to look at that willful sin. Now here's a verse from Galatians 6-7. Whatever a man sows... This he will also reap. God is a God of justice. He holds us accountable for sin we willfully commit. We are not accountable for sin from heredity or for the satanic environment we live in. God holds us responsible for only our own sin. So how is God able to sort all this out? How is he able to see the fine line between heredity environment and sin we willfully commit? I'm going to read you a verse from Hebrews 4. 12 and 13, two verses, great verses. For the word of God is alive and living and sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, judging the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are laid bare and wide open to the eyes of God. God is able to step into our lives and bring forth equity. His double-edged sword pierces through, I don't know, here's my prop, my double-edged sword. It's actually a cattle prod we got in Illinois at a, a 4-H fair or county fair. But he's able to take his double-edged sword and pierce through our soul and spirit and lay barren justice brought upon us from heredity or environment, and he separates it from sin we willfully commit. And through the power of the cross, he removes the negative effects our fallen world has had on us. I'm going to read you a verse from Romans 5, 18, another great verse. Through one act of righteousness, the cross, there resulted justification of life to all men. No matter how bad heredity and environment have Im impacted us, God brings us into equity, justice, fairness, and impartiality. God is good. He is just. He does not hold us responsible for sin brought upon us unjustly through our fallen world. He holds us accountable for only our own sin. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. God has removed every obstacle that keeps us from being obedient to Him. He has removed the negative effect this fallen world has on us. We can't blame our failures on Adam and Eve or say the devil made me do it. The ball is in our court. So what do we do with what God has given us? How do we apply this to our lives? Now here's a great promise from God. This is from Hosea 6, 1-3. Great verses. Come. Let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. God allows us to be beaten up by the world, to be torn up by heredity, wounded by environment, but through the cross, he brings healing to us. He brings restoration. He brings equity. He bandages us up. The verse goes on to say, God will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him, which is pointing to us being raised up with Christ through his resurrection. And the verse continues. So let us know, let us press on to know the Lord, for his going forth is as certain as the dawn. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. As we press on to know the Lord, the verse says the stakes get higher. We learn that from the story of Job. 
God required more and more from Job and more and more from us as we draw closer to him. But many of us are content to stay, stay where we are. We don't want to go, draw closer to God. We, we don't want to maybe go through the heartaches Job went through. We're afraid that if we draw close to God and give him control of our lives, he will mess things up. We don't want anybody messing things up. We don't want anybody tipping over our apple carts, thank you very much, <laughs> even if it's God. The only problem is, if we don't draw close to God now, if we don't start letting him into our life now, we won't be ready when he comes into our life, and he's coming. You know, he will draw close to us. That's what this is all about, us getting ready to live in God's world. So I'm going to read you that last verse of promise again. So let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. There's no doubt at the appointed time, just like the sun rises every morning, he is coming. So let us press on to know the Lord. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. God will bless us. He will restore us. He will send the rain. He will bring living water to our lives. He will deliver us from this fallen world. He will deliver us from heredity and environment. God is a God of justice and fairness. He's a God of equity. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come down to the water, forget every care. His love will surround you, the Prince of Life is there. God's peace will astound you, the Prince of Life is there.